you know, in this neighbourhood, we're, we're doing a conference at the moment to try and encourage Christians to, to go and share their faith. I, I, I really struggle with that, you know. Like, why do Christians need to be encouraged to share their faith? You know, like, why? I mean, I can't figure it out because it really doesn't make sense to me. I guess in so many ways, like, I, I know when you love someone, well, you, you tell everyone, right? And, uh, you know, when you have a you have a baby, you get married, you get a new car, uh, you get a new job. Boy, uh, we share, we share the good news of, of those things constantly, you know, we're, we're so good at it. And yet, you know, it's like with the greatest news that we have in this world as Christians that, that one day we're going to go and be with our Father and actually we can step into His kingdom now. Why are we so quiet about that? You know, all the statistics show this. They, they show that 98% um, of Christians in the West, well, they're just not sharing their faith. There's got to be a logical reason behind it. You know, I love this quote by, by Charles Spurgeon. Uh, Spurgeon, well, he, he said this. He said, you know, if you have no concern for the salvation of your neighbour, well, frankly, sir, I'm concerned about yours. I love another quote I heard recently by um, a guy called Paul Harvey. And Paul Harvey says, How is it that we've come to this place where instead of being fishers of men, we've now become like, like keepers of the aquarium? It seems so true in our churches today. It's like we just don't want to go out into this world and, and share this great news. I guess it starts really with an understanding of, um, of the fact that actually that we're, we're in a war. Uh, you know, it's a spiritual war that we're in. Do you, do you remember in the Bible, in Exodus, that I think it's Exodus 15.3, where God is described as a man of war. It says, the Lord is a man of war and the Lord is his name. You know, also in Colossians, we, we have um, Calvary depicted like a battle scene. You know, having disarmed the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the powers of this dark world and overcoming them by the cross. Of course we have Christians described as soldiers in 2 Timothy endure hardship with us like good soldiers of Christ. So you see we have a man of war, we have a battle scene, we have soldiers. We also have an enemy don't we in Ephesians it tells us that our, our battle is not against flesh and blood but against those spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. So again you see we've got this, this man of war, we've got a battle scene, We've got an enemy. In the Bible, in James 4 verse 7, actually we're given an amazing strategy. You might remember that verse, it says, submit yourselves to God and resist the devil and the devil will flee. I think we need to do that a little bit more, it's certainly something I still need to do in my life. Submit to God. And of course, the Christian graces are described as pieces of armour in Ephesians. We're given the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness, we've got the belt of truth, we've got the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the footwear of readiness which is the gospel. So again we've got this, we've got this man of war, we've got a battle scene, we've got an enemy, we've got uh, Christians described as soldiers, we've got a strategy, we're given pieces of armour. But actually what is it we're warring over? Well I guess in your church and many churches, we're worrying over so many things like poverty and disease and hunger and we're giving our money and our time to so all of these things and you know, we're, we're doing so many social programs and you know, we've, we've got to keep doing them. We've really got to keep doing these social programs and we should be the Good Samaritans. But actually, ultimately, ultimately, I'll tell you what we're fighting over. We're fighting for the very souls of men, women and children to the glory of Jesus Christ. It's souls, my friends. That's what we're here for. Jesus said, said so himself, didn't he? He made his mission statement very, very clear. He said in Luke 19.10, I came into this world to seek and save the lost. That's what he said, I came to seek and save the lost. In 1 Timothy, it says, Christ came into the world to save sinners. You know, isn't it time we got on board his plan? I really just want to finish with this. I guess many of us ask God this question, don't we? we we, we, we look up to heaven and we say, Lord, you know, 
Lord, what's your plan for my life? I really think there's something slightly selfish in that statement. I think we ought to just chop the, the end of that statement off. I mean, shouldn't it really be more like, God, what's your plan? And I think he made his plan very, very clear. Well, his plan for this world, he sent his son Jesus Christ into this world to, to search for the lost and to save them. And I think if we get on board God's plan, his plan for our lives, it will become unveiled. It will be revealed. So maybe we can start today and just step into God's plan. Maybe we can, maybe we can do what Jesus Christ himself asked us to do. And of course he asked us in Mark 16, 15, didn't he? He said, go into the world. And <laughs> he said, go into the world and proclaim the gospel. That's what he said. And You know, if we're not doing that, I guess effectively, I know, I know this sounds harsh. Uh, I guess effectively, I guess you could just turn around and say, sorry Jesus, I'm not listening to you. I've got no intention of obeying your commands. And you know, his final words, before he ascended to heaven, he said this, go into the world, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in my name, and teach them to obey everything I've commanded of you. It's called the Great Commission. It's not the incy, wincy, teeny, weeny, insignificant commission. Please, make it the Great Commission. Step away from making the Great Commission a great omission. God bless you.